kind of sent this to a rough email okay that I don't use much you want to definitely go ahead and look at your email inside of whatever email you used when you became a student at ELAC or whatever email you're using for information at ELAC so you're gonna look for this here into it education and it'll say action required by Angela Brown alright so you want to just go ahead and click on there okay and you'll see this it'll say accept invitation alright so I want you to accept the invitation but I also want to make sure that you have your your QuickBooks text in front of you meaning you set up your connect and you have access to your ebook before you accept this invitation alright so I already have access to an ebook so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna go and get open up my open up my ebook so what you would want to do is go to modules okay and then you would click on that first assignment and from here on that first assignment it's gonna go ahead and take you over to connect okay and so from here you wanna launch connect and mine's already set up like I said so if it weren't set up it would have me to put my email and go ahead and set up access okay so I'm gonna go back to my home yours will look a little different and I'll see the ebook okay if I look at it in student view that might be more helpful for you I'll look at it in student view over here to the side you'll have your reader okay so here's gonna be your ebook you can also download the mobile app and read it offline if you'd like to as well so I'm gonna just click here on the reader so I can open my book while I work on chapter one okay the exercise problems and the mandatory problems you'll see them come through come up and as you're working through the book the textbook itself okay so mine has just been opening here just because I've used it so much okay so this is what I want you to kind of set up your screen to where you have your ebook here on one side and then you have your your QuickBooks software your invitation that I sent you here on the other side okay and you want to work and you want to read through the book and you want to follow the book as as you go through okay so mine like I said continues to open up to page 8 but I'm gonna go ahead and open it up to the beginning not gonna so much go to any of this other stuff here but you can definitely read through that in your book okay I'm gonna just go ahead to chapter one all right and I'm gonna go over to the introduction so we're gonna be setting up a company and the company's name is Mookie the Beagle concierge so that means we're gonna be providing services to working individuals who have pets and they don't quite have time for their pets okay so you you can go ahead and read through this introduction alright and get more a better understanding for the company you can go ahead and read that introduction so I'm gonna go to next this is chapter one and these are gonna be your objectives okay so you'll see your learning objectives and then it's going to go ahead and tell you the different things that we'll look at. So we're going to look at setting up a new company. This is a satellite navigation. It's kind of like an outline of the things we're going to look at as we go through the chapters. Okay. It tells you where you're at in learning QuickBooks. Okay. Then we have our QuickBooks settings, our QuickBooks transactions, and our QuickBooks reports. So in chapter one, you're really just getting a feel for navigating through QuickBooks. All right, so this is our textbook, okay? This is where I want you to be before you accept that invitation. So now I'm gonna go back over to my email, okay, and I have my invitation here, and there it says accept invitation. You also wanna read this message for me. It says follow these steps to create your new company. Proceed to chapter one, page eight of your ebook. Okay, so chapter one, page eight of my ebook. I'm on page four, 19. Okay, and I, I, I don't think I mentioned it here, but if you go over to 20, that'll be page eight. Okay, so 
here's a section 1.1 QuickBooks setup new company okay so you want to be on this page and you want to be at your invite then it says open my video detailing the detailing your company setup all right so that would be this video all right then next it says accept the invitation to the company and begin setting up your company using your textbook okay so as a student enrolled in the QuickBooks course you can obtain free access to QuickBooks online to use with your text if you were an entrepreneur you would need to subscribe subscribe to QuickBooks online and pay a monthly access fee okay so you're gonna receive this for free because you're a student alright and that's why I'm sending you this invitation it, it allows you to subscribe for free so if you're already using it and you have a company you're already using that's not gonna be the company you're gonna use for this course you're gonna go and accept my invitation and you're gonna start from there alright so I'll go over here and I'll say in my in my email I'm going to say accept invitation. Okay, so it's going to give me an email address. That'll be your student email. You want to go ahead and confirm your email address. And it says it's already taken. Okay, so if it's already taken, okay, I'm going to leave it at that. It's already taken. So what I'm going to do is I'm you're gonna go here and you're gonna set up your email you're gonna set up your name and your password and you're gonna go ahead and open your company on my side what I'm not I'm not gonna go ahead and do this only because I already have mine set up but you definitely want to go through setting up your company then once it opens up let me show you what you're gonna see okay so I'm going to go ahead and add a company in order for me to work through this with you. So I'm going to say this is Brown. You want to have your last name and A. My name is Brown, Angela Brown, so I'm going to say Brown A. And then it's going to be Mookie the Beagle, Concierge. Okay, so it's not going to be your own your own company that you come up with it's gonna be the company from the book itself alright so it's brown a or whatever your last name and first initial Mookie the Beagle concierge and then we just say create the company so yours will look a little different yours gonna you're gonna create yours inside of your invite you just wanna make sure that you're setting it up with your last name first initial Okay, so for some reason it's not giving me an initial setup. I'm just reloading it and see what we get from there. Okay, so here we go. You've set up your email. Okay, you've set up your password. You've put that somewhere safe so you don't forget it. All right, now this is the, the screen where we get started and we start to set up our company. All right, it says, welcome. We're glad you're here. Here's what we'll do together right now so we're gonna you're gonna tell us a little bit about what you need help with we'll ask you a few questions to get to know your business and we'll get started on what you're here for okay and so you want to make sure that here are all of the steps we're gonna follow complete the following steps to use your the instructor invitation so we've accepted the invitation all right, and then it says to create your account, enter the requested information in the appropriate fields. If the create account does not, screen does not appear automatically, set need an, select need an account and sign up. All right, but at this point, you've already done this ID and password. So we've already created account. And then it says on number four, when welcome, we're glad you're here, appears. Welcome, we're glad you're here, appears. 
click next so we'll click next and here will be where you'll enter your company name and you want to do last name first initial as I've done here okay I kinda had to set mine up a little different only because I'm the instructor for the course but this is where you're gonna go ahead and set your name of your company up and your name should be similar to my name except you're gonna use your last name first initial okay so then we've done number five right so now we're gonna click next we have put in our company name and you'll find that it's gonna look a little different sometimes or it won't ask the exact questions so you just wanna kinda make it you you just this video should basically help you because this is the thing QuickBooks is always updating 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 just to make the software user friendly to those individuals who may not be accountants or bookkeepers that may not quite understand the ins and outs of accounting okay so this next question says how have you been managing your finances okay and so here we have we didn't get this question of check this is my legal business name and next we didn't get that right okay that's fine but we do have this it says how have you been managing your finances you want to select nothing I'm just getting started so there may be steps that'll be missed but kind of get in the flow of getting back on the checklist or if the question that's being asked is not the bullet point maybe read a little further down and you'll definitely get to that answer that question so I'm going to say nothing. I'm just getting started, just as the book said. Okay. Then after you've done that, you want to select next. And it says, how long has Mookie the Beagle Concierge been in business? So it wants to know the years of your business. All right. And it doesn't really, this one says select the next. If you do, if what does your business do appears select skip and proceed to step 10 what industry appears leave that blank so if it asks what our business does we're gonna skip it for now and proceed to step 10 alright and then if it asks the industry we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna leave that blank and say skip for now and then here it says when, when what kind of business is this appears say sole proprietor and select next so we really haven't came to how long Mookie the Biz Beagle has been in business so in this section what what I'm gonna have you do is we're gonna just go ahead and we're gonna just say under a year okay and then we'll select next alright so this just happens to be a new feature with inside of QuickBooks and it's just not aligning with the text which is okay So next it says, what kind of business is this? All right, and so is this an LLC? We said this is gonna be a sole proprietor. Okay, so we wanna say no, and then we wanna go ahead and click sole proprietor because we're not an LLC. An LLC, if you don't know, is a limited liability corporation, and it separates the owner's personal from its business. That's what an LLC is, okay? With the sole proprietor, you really don't too much focus on separation of businesses okay but it's a good idea as a sole proprietor to do it as well alright and if you're not in tune with the different type of business setups you want to go ahead and take a look at that and kind of get an understanding of those different types of business setups but in QuickBooks we want to know what type of business you are for in order just in order to understand what items in your QuickBooks you're going to need to be pulled over to your taxes okay QuickBooks is lined up with TurboTax and so if you're doing everything in QuickBooks and everything's correct at the end of the year you can go ahead and run a report with QuickBooks and TurboTax and it'll basically put together your taxes okay so we're gonna say sole proprietor for now and then we're gonna go ahead and click next so now I'm back here at number 12 and number 13 so I'll click next okay and then it says what does your business do alright and then it asked us a little higher up here so it's kind of out of order which is okay if we're reading the steps and knowing the things we're gonna have to go through 
and up here it says what does your business do if that appears we want to select skip for now and proceed so we'll select skip for now and then it asks what is the main role of a brown mookie the beagle concierge okay so we'll customize your quickbooks based on your answer so what is the main role it appears you want to select that you're a bookkeeper or an accountant that's your role inside of quickbooks for this company you're going to be the bookkeeper and the accountant okay then we're going to select next is mookie the beagle is mookie the beagle concierge your main source of income all right so this one is going to be something new that they've inserted here and this is where students get a, a little confused okay so what I've had students do this is a very tricky question actually and I think we're gonna go ahead and just say that yes this is our main source of income So we're going to just say yes, and we're going to say I own and run this business. And we're going to click next. Then it asks who works at the business. Okay, so here it asks in question 19, when who works at the business appears, you want to select contractors, employees, and a few partners. So we have contractors, employees, and a few partners. Then it asks how many employees work there. We're going to just say two to five. We're not a big company, so we'll just say two to five. Okay, because we are going to have some workers working in the company as we go. Okay, so now we'll click next. Okay, and then it'll ask about these different apps. We're not going to be using any apps, so we'll skip for now. Okay, then it says, what do you want to do in QuickBooks? Okay, so this is going to come down to this area here. Okay, this is going to be number 25. When what is everything you want to set up appears? So this is changed it a little bit. What do you want to do in QuickBooks? Okay, it's a little bit different wording. When that appears, we want to say that we're going to organize money in and out. We're going to invoice customers. And you may see that these names have changed a little bit as well. Okay, so we're going to be accepting payments. We're going to send and track invoices. Okay, so you definitely want to listen to the or pay attention to the items that I'm selecting only because the wording has changed a little bit because QuickBooks is constantly updating and this probably just seems a little easier for someone who doesn't who's not an accountant or a bookkeeper to understand we're not going to get a business bank account okay so we're going to skip that one we're going to manage and pay bills we want to track receipts and expenses Okay, and receipts and expenses, that's tracking receipts and expenses here. Create estimates or quotes. Okay, we will create some estimates, so we'll go ahead and click that. We want to track time. It says track time. We're going to track time. 
we're going to manage invoices, we're going to track sales. We'll leave this manage sales tax alone for now and then this track mileage we're not going to need to do that now we can always go and turn those on if we need to so we're going to click next from here okay so you are going to make sure that you've selected accept payments send and track invoices we're going to skip get get a business bank account we're going to be downloading our transactions okay because this is not a real business this is a fictitious business we want to manage and pay bills Okay, we want to track receipts and expenses. We want to create estimates. We want to track time. We want to manage inventory, track sales. All right, and we're not going to go ahead. We're going to go ahead and leave manage sales tax. We're going to leave that out. And we're going to we're going to leave out track mileage for deductions. Okay, and we're going to go ahead and click next. Okay, so it says got it. Next, we'll see how you accept payments, track expenses, and pay your team. So we'll go ahead and click next. Start getting paid with invoices. So this is if you wanted to go ahead and set up your invoice and make it look the way you want it to, to kind of fit your business, okay? So we can set up online payments in number one. We can give invoice templates a personal truck touch and we can send your invoice a send yourself a sample invoice that your customers will see so what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and skip this okay then this says link your accounts and see everything in one place QuickBooks will automatically bring transactions and save time manually. Okay, so this is if you have a bank account or credit card accounts. You can link your accounts, your business bank account. You can link your credit card account. So any transactions you make, they automatically pull over to QuickBooks. But we're going to skip this for now. We don't have any bank accounts set up. We don't have any credit cards. This is a fictitious business, so we're going to be either downloading data or we're going to be entering it in as we go through the chapter. So we're going to skip for now. How do you track your receipts today? So I save paper receipts. I save my receipts digitally. So you can save them digitally. I save my paper receipts and my digital receipts, or I don't save receipts. We're going to just say that we save paper receipts. And then we'll say next. Turn your paper into expenses with the snap. So QuickBooks does offer where you can take a picture of it and you'll have a digital upload of your receipts, which is really good. It's good for auditing purposes and just keeping things in line and keeping a paper trail of your transactions. We're not going to be doing this, okay? So we'll just select next, but that's just an advertisement to let you know. Go ahead and download the app to your phone or if you have a Samsung, you're going to use Google Play. If you have an iPhone, you'll use this one here. Okay, so that that is available there in order to make it life a little easier and you don't have a bunch of receipts, right? Because the business could go up in flames and all of your receipts that you're keeping as paper are gone. So now you have no trail, paper trail of any of your transactions. So that's actually a great service because now it's kept up in a cloud, okay? So QuickBooks is basically a cloud of a business and its transactions okay this is a cloud a cloud based software so we'll go ahead and click next and you're gonna have a bunch of different advertisements now they're offering us free 30-day trial to QuickBooks payroll we're not gonna be setting up any payroll so no I do not want to add payroll and we click next so now it says you're on your way and it's putting together all of the information that we've we've entered into QuickBooks okay and so here in 27 it kind of had a bunch of different questions or advertisements that was not necessarily in the book right which is okay you can watch my video and it'll take you through all of those different advertisements I kinda of helped you set it up okay so that's gonna really help you to move forward so now on 27 it says let's go so now we're at let's go, okay.
and now here we are at our dashboard okay this screen here is going to be known as your dashboard okay so yours will probably say take a quick tour here it says customize your quick actions customize your quick actions you can pin items that you'll use most reorder them we're not going to do that okay so now here it says welcome to quickbooks we're glad to have you here take a quick tour to learn everything about your home page so we're gonna instead of take a tour we're gonna say go now it says go not take a quick tour but we know this is the tour right okay so that pretty much brings you to the screen and you really you're working on your own so you if you'd like to take the quick tour then you can go ahead and do that but I'm not gonna too much take you through a quick tour so another thing is you'll see pictures here some of the pictures are gonna look a little different okay and that's okay but you can kind of look at the pictures to kind of give you an idea of where we're at okay I was just at the screen and it didn't say take a quick tour instead it said go now all right so now you've created your company all right and you want to sign back in if you have to if you maybe created your company and you took a break then you want to go ahead and make sure you save this this here web address browser web address in your browser so that every time you're getting ready to work in your QuickBooks you kind of know where you're gonna start at okay but you're gonna always need to go back to this in order to sign in with your user ID and your sign in and your password alright so this just kinda shows you how to go ahead and sign in again alright so you can read through that I'm gonna go ahead and move on so this is our QuickBooks satellite navigation and like I said, the QuickBooks Satellite Navigation is our navi is our satellite navigation to QuickBooks Online, assisting us with navigating through QuickBooks Online. It's kind of a it's you want to think of it as an outline of as to where we're going, okay, and where we're currently at. So currently we're gonna be looking at QuickBooks settings, all right, setting up the company, and then we'll look at the chart of accounts inside of our QuickBooks setting okay and we'll see that in chapters 1 and 2 okay we'll also use it in chapters 11 alright and then you have your QuickBooks transactions that you'll do in chapters 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 11 alright and then finally we have our QuickBooks report and those are just the output those are the reports that we're gonna get once we've entered all of our transactions and those are gonna be your financial statements okay and so financial statements are going to consist of the balance sheet the profit and loss statement the statement of cash flows and then tax returns we'll look at tax returns we won't be printing any but that goes over the tax returns as well then you can look at management reports and just management reports are just going to be the reports that company managers or owners use when they make decisions within the business okay maybe they want to look at how much money they made or maybe they want to look into lowering an expense and so they need a report so they can see where they're using using a lot of expense that maybe they could lower all right and so we're going to re cover reports in chapters 9 and 10 and also in our comprehensive project chapter 12 you'll chapter 11 you'll see that we need to recover reports again okay so there's also accounting essentials and they appear at the end of the chapters okay in all of the chapters and you want to make sure you're reading over those accounting essentials only because they're going to help you to understand accounting and what's going on in the background if you haven't taken any accounting courses okay so this is what our our QuickBooks navigation satellite looks like it'll have the company settings which we're going to work through in chapters one and two in the chart of accounts. Okay, so we'll start with the company settings in chapter one, then we'll move to the chart of accounts in chapter two, and so forth. It's all mapped out here for you, and it's just a map of where we're going. Okay, so navigation, you see the world there, it's a map. All right. So this first chapter is showing you that it's bolded. We're going to work on company settings in chapter one. 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and move forward. Okay, so the first thing we're looking at here, I'm going to go ahead and go back over to my QuickBooks, and I'm going to go ahead and exit out of the tour. We really don't need the tour because I'm going to basically go over Chapter 1 with you to give you an idea of how to work with the book and the software at the same time. Okay, so I have my QuickBooks company set up here, and then I have my book here, and I'm working through my book, and I'm reading my book, and I'm doing whatever it tells me to do in my book inside of my software. All right, so here it says, take a few minutes to learn QuickBooks navigation. So this is going to be our navigation bar over here, this black item here. It has these list of different items. This is going to be our navigation bar, okay? So although you will see several items on the navigation bar, there are some items on the navigation bar that you will not be using for this text. An overview follows the items of the navigation bar. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to overview, go over an overview of the navigation bar. Okay. So the dashboard, if I click on dashboard, this is my dashboard. Okay. And so it provides an overview and a summary of key information for your QuickBooks company. Then we can go over to our banking. Okay, and so the banking is going to be any bank transactions or credit card transactions. Then you'll see those in banking. So if I click there, right now it's not going to be set up. And nothing's going to be really set up because it's all new. But this is where we're going to go ahead and look at our banking, okay? And right now you don't want to be clicking on anything. You just want to kind of look at the different tabs and get a feel for the navigation. All right, then we have our sales. All right, and our sales is going to be related to customers, our customers and any sales transactions. Okay, so any customers or sales transaction, that's going to be our money in. That's where we're bringing money into the company. All right, so then we have our customer leads. And this is where you can track customer information. All right, you can do any market leads from here. Okay, so we can look at any of our customers here. Then we have cash flow, and cash flow just summarizes the money coming in from any sales and the money going out from any expenses you may have within your company. Let me go ahead and make this a little smaller. There we go. Okay, so it tracks your money, how your money is doing basically. So in the green, you'll have your money in and in the turquoise or yes the turquoise you'll have your money going out and money out is your expenses alright so then we click and our next one is our expenses alright and this is where we're gonna track and re track any vendor and any expenses expense transactions so vendors are gonna be those vendors that we purchase if we're a merchandising company that we purchase any products for from for resale all right, those will be our vendors, but we're also going to have other expenses. Maybe we have a cell phone expense. You know, those other expenses that are just general expenses, okay? Then we have projects, all right? And so this is a feature in QuickBooks that allows you to organize and track your different projects, okay? And we're going to be dealing with projects in here, so we'll definitely look at this projects tab as we go through, okay? Then we have payroll, all right, and payroll is going to show us our employees. Here you see our employees, any contractors, and any workers comp, okay? That's where we'll record those transactions. Then we have time, and time is a tracking, a time tracking feature for employees and for our contractors, okay? And so since we're not using payroll, we're not doing any W-2s, we're not we're not really using payroll, the payroll tab itself. We're going to instead be using this time feature in order to go ahead and pay our employees. Our employees are going to be contractors, so they're going to be 1099 employees, meaning they work for us, but we don't pay any taxes for them. They're considered their own business. All right, and then finally, as we move down, we'll get to reports, and we'll see reports in Chapter 10, and this is just summarized it's an output or it's a report 
from the, the things that we've put in, the transactions that we've put into QuickBooks. And it gives us our financial statements. This is where we'll find all of our financial statements. And you can create custom reports. There are lots of standard reports that are already provided in QuickBooks. But you can create those custom reports. Maybe there's a report that a certain business would like to set up. You can go ahead and customize reports. And then there's a tab there for management reports. If you have management and they need reports, there will be some sample management reports you can set up in there. Okay. But we're mostly going to be working out of standard. All right, next we have the taxes, okay? And so the whole purpose of QuickBooks is to align with our tax our tax forms, okay? So that's the whole purpose of QuickBooks, kind of getting all your information in one place, keeping up to date with your invoices, your receipts, and things like that, and then bringing it over into your taxes, okay? And you'll see your sales tax in this area. So we will do a little bit of sales tax, but as we go through the invoices, and enter transactions that's when we'll be going ahead and entering any sales tax okay next you have mileage some companies do use mileage okay and they track their mileage and so that feature is also available in QuickBooks and you can also add it to your phone which makes it more convenient especially if you're traveling and you're driving you really can't have your computer open and going ahead and tracking your mileage so QuickBooks does have this feature that you can add to your phone to track mileage. Okay, now I'm here on 13, and this is going to be your accounting. And the accounting tab here, we're going to use a lot. Okay, this is where we're going to go to our chart of accounts. And if you click on that now, you'll see that you have a chart of accounts set up. And this is a chart of accounts that kind of set up based on the information we input when we started the company okay when we initially set up the company alright so next we have the my accountant and this is where you can just go ahead and connect with your accountant and maybe you have a question or you don't understand something you can ask that question there you can also invite an accountant this is where a business owner would go ahead and invite an accountant or a bookkeeper to have access to their QuickBooks you would give them your email address they would enter it here and send you an invite Okay, and in this section, you can also, as a business owner, you can determine how much access you really want that individual to have of your books, okay, of your software, your QuickBooks software. Next, there's a feature called Capital, okay, and QuickBooks has done this new thing where they're actually giving funding to companies. They're offering funding to companies, so they're giving loans to companies, so now QuickBooks is offering that. Then there's commerce. Okay, and you can kind of set up a commerce with these different companies. We won't be doing any of that. And then finally, there's apps. If you need to use an app, so maybe you want your bills to pull through and the transactions to automatically filter in to your QuickBooks, that, uh, that's there as well. All right, so you can kind of look through these apps. We won't be using any of them, but they are there. Then there's this live bookkeeping feature here, and that's more so for small business owners or medium-sized business owners who are attempting to do their QuickBooks on their own. They have the opportunity to maybe have live bookkeeping and pay it and pay a fee. Okay, it's not going to be free. There's a fee to go ahead and get that live bookkeeper assistance. Okay. So that kind of goes over this navigation, okay? So now I'm going to go ahead and go here. And as you go through the chapter, it goes through the dashboard, okay? And it's going to show you different, different ways of looking at this and how to navigate through this dashboard or through this, this navigation bar, okay? This is going to be your navigation bar. It's going to kind of go through the book and it's going to show you the different navigation, the different navigations in each tab. Okay, so here we have the dashboard. All right, and the dashboard appears when you log into QuickBooks. Okay, that's going to be your initial screen is your dashboard. So I'm going to go ahead and click here on dashboard. Okay, and inside of the dashboard, we have two tabs here. All right, 
And so we have the getting things done, and then we have the business overview. So if I select the getting things done, I'm already on that tab, getting things done. So in the getting things done, we're going to have a workspace, okay? And so the workspace is going to display a few di a few different um flow charts, okay? So we'll have this first flow chart is going to be your customers, your expenses, your vendors, your banking deposit and your payroll. Then we have a section as it says here known as our money in. Okay? Then we have our money out. Okay, and that kind of displays money coming in, the different modules you'll use for money coming in, and the different modules you'll use or list you'll use for money going out. Okay, then it's also going to display accounting and reports. Okay, so if you have your, your bank account set up, it'll show you that as well. All right, and like I said, we're not going to link any bank accounts only because this is a fictitious business. All right, so then if we go over to business overview, so we have business overview here, and we select dashboard, then we can go to business overview. We're already in our dashboard, but those items are there from your navigation as well. You want to select business overview up top here. Okay, and in our business overview, this is going to be the dashboard where you're going to see a lot of graphs, okay? So this is the cash flow forecast, and this, like I said, is your money in and your money out. You'll see this here graph just of profit and loss, and this is going to be your income and your expenses. All right, and then we have our expenses here. We have our bank accounts, any invoices, so we'll just show our unpaid invoices and our paid invoices. And then we have a graph here for our sales, all right, and it's just going to display sales. Then we have our taxable profit, all right, it tells us what's taxable, all right, any deductions, any taxable profit. Okay, and so if you look in the book, it kind of shows you all of the different bullet points as well. So next it's banking, it'll break down banking for you. All right, so we'll go ahead and select banking. All right, so it says select select the these when you see these blue dots here, these are the things you want to be doing, okay? Sometimes it'll tell you to save information, you want to go ahead and save that information. If it doesn't tell you to save the information, you just want to back out of it, okay? And most times I tell students, once you want to once you're done with a, a topic in the book and you want to back out of it, just click here on the QuickBooks tab here. So I'll click it and it takes me back to my dashboard. Okay, so I'm just starting at my dashboard. And then you always want to make sure you're in the getting things done tab. Okay, you have both. We'll just kind of stay with getting things done. So it says select the banking on the navigation bar. Okay, so banking, this is the navigation bar. We're going to select banking. And it says see how it works. Select see how it works to watch the video, okay? If you'd like to watch the video, the video's here. I'm not going to too much go through the video, but definitely the video's there, and you can go ahead and watch that on your own. All right, and then it says note the three steps to using QuickBooks Banking, and that is you want to connect a bank or credit card to get started. We're not going to do that. We're going to be importing or uploading our transactions, and that's there, okay? We won't click that now. Then we want to review and add transactions, and the downloaded transactions can be reviewed for accuracy and make sure, and to make sure they match with what you've entered in QuickBooks. Okay. Then you can see how your business is doing by connecting the bank or credit cards to QuickBooks. It's easier to see if there's any discrepancies. Okay, but we're not going to connect any banks. You can connect the accounts, so they have a connect accounts and they have an upload. Like I said, we'll be using the upload, okay? And that's where we'll have those data files and I'll provide that upload for you. Okay, so then 
it says when a bank or credit card has been connected to QuickBooks from the banking tab, cards appear at the top of the banking screen and QuickBooks banking and credit card accounts are connected to the related accounts. Okay, so we're not setting that up so we won't have any cards appearing with any bank accounts. All right, so you can kind of just read this and understand it that if you were to set up an account, it would be there, but we're not going to set up any accounts. Okay, so I'm going to just go over that. This kind of looks like, kind of gives you an idea. So once we download our information, we're going to, we're going to see, we're going to see that here in this area, we'll have a card there. All right, so I'm going to say upload transactions here. I don't have any transactions to upload right now, so I'm going to click back out of it. But once we get those uploads started, then that's where we're going to go ahead and go and upload our transactions, okay? And we'll have a video on that in Chapter 3 once we get there. All right, so next we'll go over to our Sales tab. And we'll select sales. It says sales transactions relate to customers and sales. So these are going to be our customers and any sales we make to our customers. We're going to use the sales tab inside of the navigation bar. All right. Then from here, you can select overview. You can go to sales and you can select overview here. Or you can just select it here. If you just click on sales, it brings you to the sales, the sales interface. And we'll just click overview. It's already there. All right, and it gives you an overview of the income. All right. And here are some shortcuts as well. All right, so then all sales tab, if we click on the all sales tab, this is where we track all of our sales for our, our um, customers. We can create an invoice. All right, but we're not going to do that. We're going to just go ahead and look through it and get an idea. So these are our invoices. So this will be a list of our invoices once we start entering invoices. All right, then we'll go to our payments link. This is how we're going to get paid. All right, we can set up payments. We can create a unique link. But this is an area where you can go ahead and set up any payments. Then we have our customers tab. This is where we're going to track all of our customers. This is where we're going to add customers in this particular area here. Okay, and we'll get to that as we continue to go through. Then finally, we have our products and services. And our products and services is going to be where we enter any products, okay, that that we want to be selling with our in our business. All right, and so we'll be entering some products once we get to chapter four and five. All right, so we'll go ahead and go out of here. And like I said in the book, there always be pictures. Sometimes the pictures don't align with what's actually on the screen, but it kind of gives you an idea as to exactly what you should see on your screen as you're moving through these different bullet points, these different blue bullet points. So now we'll go over to cash flow. Okay, and cash flow just shows you the money going in and the money going out. Okay, if we have here on the overview tab, you can click it here. It already brings you there. Okay, and you'll see your bank accounts if you have them set up. We're not going to have any set up. Okay, and then if we go to, well, you'll notice there's a money in and money out report. Okay, so if I click on... Here's all accounts. Here's the forecast. All right. Then if I go down in my Outlook, I have my money coming in. That's for our sales. And my money going out, that's for any vendors or any expenses that we need to pay. Any vendors we need to pay or any expenses we need to pay. Okay, so that's what we're going to see in our cash flow, our money in and our money out. So now I'm going to go over to expenses. And in our expenses, this is where we enter our expenses. We can either connect the bank and the transactions will automatically pull over. Like I said, this is a fictitious business, so we're going to just go ahead and add our expenses manually. Okay, so when that time comes, we'll click here and we'll add our expenses manually. For now, we're not going to do anything. We're just moving through.
to get an idea, okay? So then we have bills, all right? And this is gonna be where we enter any bills or and it'll show us any bills we have. Right now we don't have any bills. We'll get to this section, we'll add bills, we'll do thing, different things like that. Right now we're just kind of understanding where to find everything. So then if I go to vendors, this is gonna be a screen where we can add our vendors. Okay, so we'll have a vendors list, we'll have a customers list, we'll have an employees list. As we go, you'll notice there'll be a lot of different lists. QuickBooks uses lists so that you're not entering the same information as far as the vendor name, address, any information we use in order to track expenses for taxes. All of that information is gonna be included in a list so that it automatically goes over to the invoice each time you prepare an invoice or record a transaction for any vendors or any sales for any customers, okay? So we'll add our vendors when that time comes. All right, so next we're gonna go on over to projects. All right, and projects is relatively new to QuickBooks, okay, but it's where you can go ahead and start projects and track and track projects, track any of your transactions as a project, okay? And we're gonna be using projects. So what it is is we have these owners that have these pets and they work a lot of hours so they don't have time to maybe take the pet for a walk or take the pet to a vet. So we're setting up this company where we're gonna do those types of things for them. We're gonna basically run their errands for their pet and take care of their pet for them while they're working. So the project, the, the owner will be in charge of paying, but the project will be the actual pet and we'll set everything up as a project. And as we go, you'll kind of understand where I'm going with it. Right now it's a little Greek, but you'll definitely understand it. If you'd like to take a look at, see how it works, the videos there, you can also see how it works and look, and look at that video as well. Okay, and you wanna remember that inside of our modules, we also have videos for each of these sections that kind of help you to understand what you're going to be doing in your book, what you're going to be doing in your software, okay, to get things done. So in your learning content of the modules for each chapter, there's videos there as well, okay, that can accommodate this video here. Okay, so whenever we want to set up a project, we're going to just select start a project, but at this point, we're going to just keep going because we'll use it in later chapters. Okay, so then there's payroll. We'll go over to payroll again. Okay, and in payroll, you're going to have your employees. Okay, so we'll just set ourselves up as an employee. All right, we won't do that right now, but we will be setting ourselves up as an employee. Okay, and in order to set up employees, it says not ready for payroll, but still want to track employee time. We can help add employee. So you can add an employee, okay? Even though we didn't set up payroll, we do have that option to add an employee. And then you would just click add employee. But we're not gonna do that right now. We're gonna just keep moving forward, getting to kind of know where we're at in QuickBooks, okay? So then we can select the contractors tab. And this is where you're going to go ahead and add contractors. You'd click add your first contractor here, and you could go ahead and add a contractor. So in chapter eight, we're going to be looking more into adding a contractor and tracking time. Okay, so now we're at time. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the time. And then it gives you this overview. All right, so. We'll get to this. I don't really want to do any clicking right now. So this is where we'll go ahead and track time when that time comes. Then we have reports. Okay, and like I said, reports just summarize whatever you've put into QuickBooks and it gives you those financial statements that business owners need, that auditors may need, that managers may need. This is where you're going to find your reports, such as your balance sheet, your profit and loss statement, your accounts aging summary accounts receivable aging summary okay things like that as we go through you'll get a good understanding of those different reports that most companies are going to need on a monthly basis 
Okay, and so you do have the option of selecting favorites, and you just do that by starring them as you go through. So here I have my balance sheet and my profit and loss statement. They're starred because most times those are going to be some things that companies want to look at. This accounts receivable aging summary. So accounts receivable are going to be those accounts that the customer hasn't paid us yet. We do expect some type of payment in the future. So we're going to have those aging, those summaries there because we want to look at, okay, this client is now 30 days or 60 days past due. We got to start trying to collect on it, okay, because if we don't, we probably won't get paid. That's just what the aging summary is. You can kind of look at those accounts receivables or those monies that you haven't yet, you have yet to receive from customers. Okay, so we'll definitely be getting into reports. But we'll get into those reports towards the end, okay? So that's reports is in Chapter 10. All right, so then we have our taxes. We're not going to too much deal with taxes besides any sales tax. And that tab is here. We have our sales tax, income tax, and our 1099 filings, okay? 1099 filings are going to be for those contracted um, employees. That's where you'll go and file your 1099s. We won't be doing any of that, but that is there and available inside of QuickBooks. Alrighty, so we're gonna move on forward. Then there's mileage. I talked about mileage briefly. That's there as well. We won't be doing any mileage too much. Okay, then we have accounting. This is gonna be our big section here, okay? Accounting, this is our area. We're gonna be using our chart of accounts. We're gonna, you can reconcile in there. We won't do too much reconciling but all of that option is there available as well. Okay, and that's gonna be in our accounting and our chart of accounts here. Okay, so that's what that looks like. If I wanted to go to accounting and go to reconcile, I click on reconcile. And it, it matches your books to the bank records, okay, or to any transactions you've entered, you can go ahead and reconcile. Okay, but we won't do any reconciling. We'll mainly be in the accounting using this chart of accounts. You can also click here to get to reconcile, but we'll mainly be using our chart of accounts. Okay, and I kind of talked about my accountant here where you can go ahead and email the accountant that you want to go ahead and let access your books in order to do your bookkeeping. You can send them an invite from there. Or you can also ask for pro help. Okay, so there's options as you get further into it where you can be a pro advisor. Okay, so you can find me on QuickBooks Accounting as a pro advisor. Okay, I do have that option to assist, to go ahead and assist customers with their bookkeeping. All right, so they do have that option where you can be set up as a pro advisor and you can earn money that way as well. All right, so that basically goes over the navigation. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and that actually takes me, we started on page 8. We're at page 50 now, okay? But we do want to be making sure we're going over this side by side, okay? And it takes about an hour, and a hour, hour and a half to kind of go through the book. So that's why you want to kind of, set up your time you don't have to do all 50 pages in an hour okay you want to take some time and go back again and kind of look at it oh, okay this is where I can go ahead and go to my accountant if I'm a business owner and I can invite a bookkeeper or an accountant or a CPA to go ahead and have access to my QuickBooks so you just want to get really comfortable with where to find things inside of QuickBooks so I'm going to go on over to the next page. So this is section 1.4, and these are the QuickBooks tools. Okay, so there's different QuickBooks tools that allow you to enter information and look for information inside of QuickBooks. All right, so we have our gear icon. This is going to be our gear icon, okay? The gear icon is going to be very important as you use QuickBooks. Then we have our plus new icon. That's when we're entering new information. Okay, then we have our search icon, which is this looking glass. Okay, so with our gear icon, it's going to be located here in the upper right-hand corner. All right, and so if I go ahead and select it, 
it's going to show me some of those lists. It'll show me my company, my accounting settings, my managed users, so who I'm allowing to be users in this company. All right, so that would be any accountant or bookkeeper as a business owner, or maybe your uh, actual firm yourself and you have bookkeepers at work under you, you can give some of those users access to the QuickBooks in order to do, you can kind of set out jobs for each of your bookkeepers. Then we have custom form styles. Okay, so you can custom your form, customize your forms. Then here's our chart of accounts. All right, and then we have lists. This shows all lists. So we're going to have our products and service list. We're going to have a recurring transactions list. We'll get to all of that. All right, and in this class, we won't be looking at tags. Okay, so whenever you come to a tags, you want to just go ahead and not, not go and complete that section. Tags have been taken out of the homework completely as well. All right, then we have our tools. This is where we can order checks, import data, reconcile. Okay, we won't too much be in this tools section. Okay, we do have our audit log here, though. We can audit or view the list of transactions that we've entered. So you do have that option as well. Okay, so now I'm going to go out of here. We're going to look at the search icon. So in the search icon, this is where you can enter information. Maybe you want to enter a last you want to enter the last transaction you entered or the last check you can type in that check number and it'll take you over to that area all right we also have the advanced search and this just does a more detailed search okay we want too much to be using this advanced search or the search menu too much but you want to learn how to use it in order to move around quickbooks okay so let me go to the next so now we're at section five dot 1.5 and this is your help okay your help in troubleshooting so you do have that option to get help and it's going to be this button here if I click there we can get help sometimes this isn't set up or it won't set up for you but in this particular one it's set up pretty good but you can also ask me for help alright if you if you get a little lost you can go here and type something in it'll kinda of direct you this is basically just like a little chat that'll kinda of help you get to where you need to if maybe it's late at night and you really want to get this done you could try typing it in here in this help and troubleshooting okay so that's available that's here is help alright then we have our QuickBooks updates alright any updates you can go ahead and go to to this site here and look for any updates okay and you'll go to the website then you'll go to QuickBooks 4e and then you'll go to your QuickBooks 4e updates and you can look at any updates we did see a few times the screens looked a little different if you go click here it'll show you any updates and it'll kind of get you in tune to and back on track okay it's not gonna update your ebook or anything but it's gonna definitely give you an update of why things have changed okay okay so we're not going to too much be looking at clearing any cookies that you shouldn't need to do that at all I mean that's getting a little too technical so don't really focus on any of that okay you can open multiple browsers okay that is option and option and in order to open multiple browsers all you're gonna do is you're gonna go over to the actual tab here you right click and you just say duplicate okay you just select duplicate and it opens another tab up for you okay so that option is there as well most times you're only going to need one tab open okay that's uh, again a little technical it's important you know but that option is there we won't use it as much maybe on your side you'd like to use it or try to use it go right ahead just be very careful with entering information in two different tabs okay and then we're in section 6.1 alright this is QuickBooks settings 
all right and this is where you go ahead and you look at your company settings okay in order for us to look at our company settings we're going to find that in our gear icon okay so we'll select our gear icon and we'll go over to your company and we'll select account and settings all right and then there will be different tabs here let me scoot this over you really can't see it okay so we'll have different different navigations here inside of this accounting and settings we'll have our company we'll have our billing and subscription our usage sales expense payments and time and then any advanced settings okay so in our billing and subscriptions first off in our company session section we're going to just see our company name the company type and this is just information we entered in in the beginning okay we'll have an e a company name a, the tax form it just tells us what type of business we're running then we have our company email we still need to enter a company address so all of that information is going to be entered here then we have our billing and subscriptions okay right now we have QuickBooks Plus and it's free and we're going to leave it at that we don't want to have any QuickBooks online set up none of this we want we only want this this QuickBooks plus okay eventually we'll go ahead and turn on our quickbooks time but we won't do that right now okay then our usage this is just who can use we have a limited users are limited in ours okay so we have users of one to five i believe that'll be a question all right so take note of that we have chart of accounts that'll be a question as well it'll ask you the chart of accounts how many accounts can you have you can have up to 250 and then the tags you shouldn't have any questions but you can have up to 40 tags with what we've set as our usage usage limits okay so then we have sales and sales just tells us how we prefer our invoices are there net 30 so we want payment within 30 days of the date of the invoice it just goes over some different items that we're going to use inside of our QuickBooks. And you'll be dealing with this page in your homework, okay? So when it starts asking you about in your homework, you want to go over to your gear icon and you want to choose account settings and settings and it'll take you to the information to answer those questions for your homework. All right, so there's an expense tab as well and that's just setting up our bills and expenses in how we want to set it up as far as how we want to track it and those different information then there's payments all right and that's for any payments how we want to get paid we're not going to be setting any of that up then here in time we'll look at time a little bit okay and we'll look at who tracks time the first day of each work week is going to be a sunday so in your homeworks in this chapter you'll look at some of these tabs in this accounting settings then we have advanced all right, so we'll also be looking at this as well in your advance, okay? So we'll get to that, but this is there as well. Once you're out of there, you just click done. Okay, and we come out of there. And so I'm still sitting here in this My Accountant tab, and I'm like, wait, where is my dashboard? Why don't I see my dashboard, right? You can either click dashboard. You always want to have your dashboard as your main starting point. You can either click dashboard or you can go over here to QuickBooks and click the logo and it brings you back to your dashboard. Okay, so we'll keep going. These are just some pictures of the things you will see as you're going through QuickBooks, okay? The tax forms. Okay, so now we're on page 67 all right and this is tax forms okay so it says next we want to select the tax form for Mookie the Beagle concierge to learn more about the different types of entities and which revenue tax account form they should file all right so you can see accounting essentials at the end of chapter one to kind of get an idea of the different types of businesses and the different types of forms that each business would go ahead and Use. So we're going to go over to number one and we're going to select the gear icon, which is here. And then we're going to go to account and settings. All right, and I'm just following the directions here. 
then I want to select company all right and most times when you open it up it's already opened up to company okay then it says on the right side of the company type se section edit select edit pencil okay so we have company name we have company type all right so we want to look at the company type and we want to select the pencil all right ours is already set up for 1040 if yours isn't then you want to go ahead and select the pencil and you want to go ahead and select sole proprietor 1040 okay and then you want to save and it saves it okay we've already done that if yours didn't save then you want to go ahead and make that correction there then we have company information okay so now we're going to enter some company information so again you go to gear icon I'll go ahead and click out of here okay repetition doing is knowing so the more you do it the more you're going to understand where to find this information so we'll go over to our gear icon again and now we're going to enter some company information as far as their social security number or EIN number we're going to enter that contact information we're going to enter an email a company phone number and an address as well okay so I'm going to gear icon again I'm going to gear icon account and settings and I want to make sure that I'm at the company name section alright so the company name is there alright but we need to put in our EIN and S our social security number so we'll click this pencil that pencil allows us to edit okay and so here we're gonna enter this one 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 okay and we're going to say that this is a social. Okay, and so we're going to say 1111111111. One, 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 one. And we're going to go ahead and save. Okay, so now we have that information there. We have our company name and we have our social security number alright you can go back in there and edit it and maybe put those dashes in if I select view and edit okay we'll just leave it at or here we go it's opening up now it's Wi-Fi is moving a little slower than normal they want to make sure it's me I'm not gonna go ahead and change that I'm gonna just go ahead and leave it okay and I'll just say save but you notice you can also put your logo there and the company legal name is the same as the company name it already says that okay next on the right side of the contact info here we have contact info we want to select the edit pencil alright and we want to put in the company email we have that then we want to add the company phone number alright here it says the company phone number right so we're going to go ahead and say the company phone number is 415-555-1111. All right, there's no website. We're going to leave that blank, and we're going to go ahead and save. Then next, number nine, bullet point number nine, we want to go to the address section. Here's the address section. We want to click on the edit pencil. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and say done. 
and then I'm gonna go back into it for some reason it's blocking me out so I'm gonna go to gear icon again Sometimes you have to back out of it and go back to it and things have refreshed and you can go ahead and enter the information so we're gonna go back to account and settings and I want to edit my company address okay so see now it's giving me that option okay so I want to search for the address and I do that by just entering the first few numbers street address and things like that it's not gonna there's not gonna be a real address for it but we're gonna go ahead and just tell the computer this is my address and it's correct okay so we're this is our address here 432 Phoenician Way Okay, and then it says enter manually. Yeah, we want to go ahead and enter manually. So, 432 PHE Phoenician Way. And this is going to be in Mountain View. California. And I'm just taking this directly from the book here the zip code is 94043 and then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna save is this correct yes this is correct and then I'm gonna select done okay and those are just some pictures so now here we come this is a quick check and it says verify the company's address okay so this quick check is going to be inside of your connect okay so this would be inside of your connect what you want to do is if you're not opened up to connect right now you don't have it you just want to remember that oh, okay when I want to find out what is my company address all I need to do is go to here and go to my gear icon go to account and settings it asks what is the address so I go over I go down here and I can find my address my address is 432 Phoenician Way Mountain View California in the zip code that information is there but you can also find the information here as well right but you want to make sure you know how to find it inside of QuickBooks okay so that's a free 20, 10 points that you get right off the top okay so I've helped you with that first one alright so now we're gonna go to the next page I'm gonna go ahead and click out of here on my software and make sure I'm in my dashboard you can get to my dashboard from the logo or I can click on dashboard here and it brings me back to this page so I'm gonna go on to the next okay and so these are the accounting essentials okay so accounting essentials kinda of help you to get an idea of what's going on in this accounting like if you haven't taken accounting one you may be a little lost on this or if you haven't taken accounting one and two you'll be a little lost as far as what's going on it's okay there's videos inside of there's videos in the modules that kind of go over accounting okay and what we're looking at that at this current moment in chapter one but you can definitely read over these on your own and it gives you an idea of the tax forms that each type of business entity was set up okay and so we're sole proprietor so we're going to be using a form 1040 okay so this you want to read over this this is great information alright so then we go to next this is a practice quiz you can take okay then we have our exercises this is where you'll start your exercises I won't be going over exercises in the book but this is where you'll start your exercises this is just beginning just has you to go ahead and open up you sign into your QuickBooks okay and it shows you pictures here's another quick check alright so you're gonna do all of this inside of you're gonna be looking at your software alright and so you're gonna be answering the questions with inside of connect so answer the following question about Mookie the Beagle concierge company types and setting alright so you could go ahead and 
do it from here and then enter it into connect or you could open connect as you're working through it and you can go ahead and look at it that way okay so what I'll do is let me go ahead and just open up this first one and I'll I'll go ahead and help you get this first one done here just so you have an idea of what to expect so just give me a moment and after that we'll pretty much be done with this for now okay so let me go ahead and get signed in over here bear with me So this is chapter one, your mandatory. Let me look at this from a student view or else I'll give you all of my answers. And we don't want to do that. We want to make sure you understand what you're doing. So this is chapter one, the mandatory assignment. If I click on there and I say begin. It's gonna be worth 10 points and it's one question, okay? You have unlimited attempts, okay? so. Another thing is the score for this attempt will be reduced by 10% for each day it's late, okay? Late, meaning after the 25th. So we'll say continue. So it says what is the address, okay? And I kind of went over that with you here. Let me go back a page, back out of the quiz, out of the essentials. So here, if I go scroll back down, all the way down we'll see that quick check right here this is the quick check it asks what is the address right so here we can go ahead and enter that it actually has a drop down for you right so we put in 432 Phoenician Way right what city was it Mountain View so here we'll write Mountain View there we go Mountain View what state is it California Okay, and what was the zip code? 94043. Okay, you can find that information again by going over to your gear icon. You want to go to your account settings. Okay, and then in your address here, you'll find all of that information right there. Okay, so you should get 10 points right away, right? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and select done. I'm going to leave that as is. I'm going to go back over to my chapter one. So this is your first assignment. Done. Ten points, right? So then we go over. I'm going to go out of here. I'm going to go ahead and submit and say submit. Ready to submit. You're all done. View your results. Everything's good. Okay, so then we'll go ahead and say exit. So then we have here our exercise problems. Okay, that's going to be our homework too. We want to begin. Okay, and so then I'm going to go over here in my book and I'm going to go ahead and get to the exercises. Here, we're going to start here with the Mookie exercises. It says the company settings and company. So I'm going to say continue. All right, and so this first problem, this first quick check is a little different from just a tad bit different. So I think I need to go ahead and scoot over here. Exactly. So it says, match the following sections from QuickBooks online navigation bar with the best, with the, with the single best answer for the related activity. So customer list, vendors list, chart of accounts, how do you create a balance sheet? I went over those briefly. Okay, so where would we find our customers, our customer list? So in order, you're going to either be selecting accounting, expenses, my accountant, reports, or sales. 
and we talked about customers and sales right so in our sales if I go back over here and I kind of get back out of here if I go and I want to figure out where am I going to find a customers list so you could look in your they're telling you to look at your accounting tab your expense tab my accountant reports or sales inside of this navigation bar the first one is the customers list okay so I'm in sales oh, okay here's the customers list I can find the customers list inside of sales okay so in in my home my assignment here I want this one to say sales right my vendors list my vendors and expenses so I go back over to QuickBooks and I'm like okay sales I don't see any I don't see a vendors there okay then it says you can check your expenses expenses there's my vendors so I need to go to my expenses in order to find my vendors list okay so I go back to my chapter one and I select expenses that's where I'm gonna find my vendors then to view my chart of accounts where did we see our chart of accounts so we'll go back over and if you recall I went down to accounting and here's my chart of accounts so I find my chart of accounts inside of my accounting so I go back over to my connect and I say oh, okay I'm gonna find that in my accounting then it says create a balance sheet where can I find balance sheets and financial statements hmm that was inside of reports right so if I go back over here and I double check and I go to my reports that's where I'm gonna see a balance sheet I can also see a profit and loss statement that's where I'm gonna get all the output or all of those financial statement forms that most business owners and managers are going to need inside of my reports tab so I go back over to my homework and I say you know what I can create a balance sheet inside of reports so I click reports and then oh I want to invite an accountant to view my QuickBooks company okay professor Brown said in my accountant so let's go over to my accountant and be sure if I go to my accountant here it is I can invite it I can go ahead and invite an accountant right here in in my account accountant tab right so we go back over to our homework assignment and we choose my accountant that's going to be where I can go ahead and add an accountant all right so I'll just go ahead and click submit and it says I have seven that are incomplete so I'll just go ahead and not do that all right so I have that there now I want to go to number two so I'll just select next and then it wants you to go ahead and look at the categories so transactions can be grouped into different types of category different types of categories of transactions match each of the following on the plus new window in the following transactions so a bank deposit an expense a sales receipt a payroll you we want to know from the plus new match the following found on the plus new window so if I go over here and I click on plus new okay I didn't too much go over this one but now we're getting the chance to go over it if I click on the plus new I have my customers I have my vendors I have my employees and I have other so where can we find a bank deposit a bank deposit can be found under other okay where can we find an expense expenses found under vendor so if I go back over here bank deposit is going to be found under other expense is going to be found under vendors sales receipts sales receipts should be found under customers okay so if I go back and look here and I click on my plus new customers here's my sales receipt okay payroll is under employees journal entries are under other okay so I'm just looking at this list here and determining under which category can I find it when I go to the plus new okay and this is our plus new all right and if you're entwined and kind of have an understanding of each of the following then you're gonna pretty much be able to find it understand where you'll find each of them so payroll it said that payroll was underneath employees 
journal entry was underneath other and then our purchase orders our purchase orders I believe those are going to be under go back to plus new under vendors exactly because we're putting in a purchase order we want to purchase some items sometimes we have to put in a purchase order okay then our estimates our estimates will be found under customer our pay bills is found under vendors then our check is going to be found under vendors then our receive payments where are we going to receive our payments under customers any invoices will be under customers okay so if I go back over here our purchase order is going to be underneath our vendor our estimates we said that was going to be under our customers I believe pay bills will be under expenses or vendors the check will be under vendors receive payments we're going to receive payments under our customers our customers are going to pay us we're going to create invoices for our customers so we're going to say under customers and I'm going to just double check this estimate so I go back to plus new estimates is under customers what did I put it under it's under customers pay bills pay bills is under vendor and I put it under vendor check I want to double check that check too checks are going to be under vendors what did I put it under I put it under vendors customers you're going to receive payments and so forth so that should help with that okay that's about as far as I'm going to go in this it kind of tells you what to do and where to go as you go through it all right and this one's going to talk about the QuickBooks navigation then we have our QuickBooks tools our gear icon and our plus new icon and you just say where you can find these items if you're going to go to the gear icon or if you're going to go to the plus new icon so you'll click on the gear icon and look for them okay click on the plus new icon and look for them they're either on the gear icon or they're either on the plus new okay so I'm gonna go ahead and submit this I have six problems that weren't done but that's okay so all of that is correct and then if I go over to next this is all correct okay so you're just telling me where you can find these items alright so that kind of takes you through that this is a long video so I'm gonna go ahead and stop this video at this point but I definitely want you to go ahead and start working on your chapter one exercises getting your company set up the most important thing is the beginning of this video and that you set up things correctly and then another very important thing the whole video is important but those topics you really want to zoom in on and make sure that you understand is how to get the homework complete okay where to put your homework answers and you want to make sure you understand how to set up the company all right so I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of here all right and you also find your chapter quiz here you can go ahead and take your chapter quiz all right I'm not gonna I'll click on it just so you have an idea before you go and click on yours there it's worth 10 points okay you get one attempt this is an unlimited attempts and you get 40 minutes okay and there's 11 questions it says what which of the following does not appear in the QuickBooks online navigation bar accounting expenses owners or sales okay so which one doesn't appear you want to just go ahead and answer that question all right so that pretty much shows you how to go ahead and get started all right in chapter one if you have any questions email me I'm here with email for through email and I'll this first week I'll, I'll try to respond as quick as possible okay because I know you're all want to get started and you're probably excited to get started so I'll be here through email I'll try to answer within 24 hours at the latest okay so have a great day have fun digging into chapter one don't pull your hair out we're here to learn we're not masters of it we're learning it so it's a learning process and I'm here to help you all right, have a great day.